Welcome back to Face the Nation. For more on the impact of the court's decision, we turn to our chief legal correspondent, Jan Crawford. Jan, this was a huge decision. You accurately predicted it uh, for months December back in December. Um, but what we know is the Supreme Court ruled a state can now ban abortion not only before viability, which is 24 weeks, but at any time in pregnancy. So what does that mean? What does post-Roe America look like? Well, I mean, I think, as you saw from your excellent conversations with Governor Whitmer and Governor Nome, there's going to be a patchwork of laws based on what the states there think about abortion and the right to abortion. So it will depend on where you live. And if you're a woman in a state that bans abortion, unless you can get your legislators and your governor to change that law, you're going to have to travel to another state to get an abortion or try to get medical abortion, those pills by mail. But as you saw from Governor Nome, some states are going to try to ban that as well. But the point is, women do have more options now, I guess. If we look back to what it was like before Roe, there are more options. Um, abortion is generally more discussed. There's more support for women seeking abortion than there was then. Uh, but in some ways also, the conversation has gotten more punitive now. You see efforts to punish women and efforts to turn neighbors into bounty hunters of sort. So it's going to be interesting to see how that works out as we progress. No, it's a great point. And I think we're we're just beginning this conversation, right. really, about abortion. Um, but the decision itself made at the core, the security that day was incredible. And we know the Supreme Court justices themselves are under heavy guard. Well, it's been a significant amount of threats. I mean, and even before the ruling, uh, we saw an attempted assassination attempt, a man charged with attempting to assassinate Justice Kavanaugh. Uh, the, the protests we've seen so far, though, they've largely been pretty peaceful. And uh, I think groups on both sides are really trying to condemn any violence and keep the debate really focused not on violence, but on the real issues that go to the core of um, women's rights and, and the rights, as the other side says, to the of the unborn. Justice Thomas wrote that this court should revisit decisions related to gay marriage and contraception. But the conservative majority, Justices Alito, Justices Kavanaugh, they both said in their opinion that it doesn't call those things into question. So which is it? And does this set our country on a course towards, you know, political and legal conflict. Well, I mean, yeah, more more political and legal conflict than we have now, right? Um, so, yes, I mean, Justice Thomas wrote that separate opinion that the language is obviously very jarring for some people to read, but he has one vote, and it takes five. And the court majority said it's hard to see how we could be any more clear that those cases, the right to contraception, the right to same-sex marriage, are not in doubt that abortion is different because, as the court said, it involves a life. You had Justice Kavanaugh writing a separate opinion, making that point, emphasizing that point. Those cases are not at risk. So right now, there are not five votes on the Supreme Court to re-examine those cases. There is one. But it opens that conversation about, do you need to put those things into law, codify them? There's, there's so much more here, Jan. You're going to be busy. I'm sure you'll be back with us. Thank you for your uh, analysis here.